All right, right now I am joined by super middleweight, uh, top 10 ranked uh, U.S. super middleweight, Linnell Bellows, uh, fresh out of the Mayweather promotions and Mayweather training camp. Uh, he's going to be fighting here uh, in May, a part of the uh, triple header uh, that they're going to have there on Showtime. He's going to be the undercard. They're going to have uh, three tremendous uh, junior middleweight bouts, but he's going to be part of the undercard, Mr. Lionel Bellows. What's going on, man? What's up, my man? How you doing, brother? Ah, uh, man, uh, just, just chilling, man. Just chilling. Now, like I said, you're going to be part of this uh, card here on May 21st. Uh, but right now, yeah. there's, you know, as we record this, there's no opponent name right now. Um, you know, what, what kind of focus do you have in training in regards to not knowing exactly who you may face when you're about a month out from fighting? Well, being that I'm so new to the game, man, it's always areas that need to be uh, sharpened. So, I mean, we just working on improving as a, as a, as, as a team, you know, all within myself, become just a better boxer, better fighter, just being, being the best KO fellow I can be. So, I mean, until I get up on it, it might not be no actual direction, but the, the, but the ultimate goal for us is just to keep improving and, and getting better as we as we learn day to day. Now, with something like that, you know, how much of a short notice is okay in regards to the naming of a pony? Because you're going to be physically ready to fight regardless of whoever they throw at you here in a couple of weeks. But wouldn't you like to know at least, you know, two or three weeks out who you're going to be facing and not the week of or two weeks before? Uh, that way you can kind of have some kind of background on what they do and some, maybe kind of pick up on some of their tendencies? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, this is the fourth week, which means we still have three weeks after this week. So I'm sure that uh, management of Mayweather Promotion, they, they, they're working uh, to make sure I see a name and uh, have an opponent probably within the next few days. So. Hopefully by the top of next week, you know who will be the victim. <laughs> It'll be the, I like that. I like that. Now, your last victim here, we got an opportunity to actually see you on television. A lot of us in boxing have been able to see you a part of the undercards, but to the masses, they weren't actually familiar with the face. They've heard the name, but not so much the face. They got an opportunity to see that here against Antoine Eccles. Uh, it was a big step up in competition for you as well. Uh, what did you learn about yourself as an evolution of as a fighter since you're kind of stepping up and fighting a veteran like that and for the most part, you had relative ease in the ring. What did you uh, kind of figure out about yourself in that bout? Uh, I, just, it, I just really seen that the hard work and dedication that my, myself and my team was putting in the gym was getting to stand off. I mean, whether it was, a, 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 for lack of a better term, a slouch or a guy with such a record, you know, it's, it's really about progression. And, and after a fight like the Antoine Eichen fight, I seen that uh, we definitely headed in the right direction, but there's so much more to go. You know, it's, it's a long road, and we're, we're, we're starting good. We're starting good on this long road to the top. And you're correct. It's, it's Atkins, not Eccles. I don't know. I, I get those two confused. My apologies uh, to Antoine. But, hey, he was just another victim on your road uh, to, to uh, you know, being a top 10 ranked guy now. With that being stated, you know, you're kind of coming into boxing later than most. Uh, you really didn't get into the profession, you know, big until you were 21. You're now age of 30. Do you feel that you need to be more fast-tracked? Are you okay with the pace they're currently kind of leading you on to and not throwing too much at you all at once? Yeah, I mean, I'm blessed to be in a position that I'm in. I'm blessed to be in, but I don't have a prestige, amateur background. I don't have a lot of experience. I do feel like we're progressing at, at the timely basis. And that one that's, that's great according, according to my career. So, uh, I mean, right now I'm pleased, and uh, like I said, there's so much to learn in this sport. So, I mean, I'm just taking it a day at a time. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel like I'm under, I'm uh, working at a too slow of a pace. I feel that we're, we're positive, positively progressing right to where we need to be. And in due time, and a short amount of time, we'll be, you know, there for a world title shot. Now, as you said, you know, the short amount of time that you've been a part of the sport, you know, from now until when you actually got in the sport, what is maybe the biggest thing that you've learned about this sport of boxing that you had no idea, you know, before walking into it that you now know now, uh, being now that you've been experienced and been around the game for some years now? Oh, just, just the work, the work that it takes, the sacrifice. You know, I, you, no one never really sees that the inside work, where things leading up to the moments of glory, is what really makes the moments of glory worth having. And like I said, I never realized how much hard work and dedication and focus and just sacrifice it took to 
as a pound an actual boxer. Not even just a world class boxer, just to actually say that you're a boxer, it's a lot of sacrifice and hard work that has to be put in. And since from now to then, I realized it and I've embraced it and I've actually, uh, I'm challenging it daily. You know, that if I want to be, be the best me, it's very important that uh, I constantly push myself to the limit and constantly, and constantly make sure I grow day to day. Now, you know, as I said, you're promoted here by Mayweather Promotions. What do you think is the biggest misconception about guys such as yourself and other fighters under the promotion that a lot of outsiders and fans think just linked with that name, you fighters automatically have all this catered to you, but what is maybe the biggest misconception people don't know from the outside that you guys know on the inside of being part of Mayweather Promotions? Oh, man, it's a lot of grind. You know, everybody think it's handed to us, but no, nah, we got to fight down. It's a lot of great, you know, that we go through it each individually as fighters. Like I said, everybody has their day-to-day -day issues, their everyday life issues. And uh, money being part of it, I mean, all of it, we, we, we are still hungry fighters just because we're under that banner. That's just, we just put on the, uh, uh, on the platform and the stage to where when, when it's time to show, we, uh, we're blessed to get a lot more accolades under the, the, the banner, but every day, we, we're all in the gym, we're all fighting down, we're all finding, giving it all every day, just like every other possible. We just have to be in, the, in, a, in a blessed, fortunate situation to be under the Mayweather banner. Do you think that as a fighter, since you are underneath that banner, that you guys have to maybe, I don't want to say go out and give extra effort, but kind of almost to prove a point to say, I'm not just this guy's stable mate or under this guy's promotion. I'm actually a real deal fighter. Do you ever feel there's any pressure for guys such as yourself and others that are part of the promotion to really have to go out and just overly prove yourself? Because it's so many people in boxing who just think once you're tied with that name, you know, it's going to be, you know, oh, this guy's just yada yada. Oh, yeah, it's definitely always an unfair competition. Because everybody, I mean, it's like being at the top spot. Everybody wants what you got. And like I said, everybody feels that once you get under Mayweather promotion, you've made it. So constantly you got a target on your back. We have a target on our back. And it's, it's definitely a, a, a pressure to go out there and make sure that we're performing and making sure that we're making stands because people think that they can take what we got. It's because we're under the Mayweather banner or they feel like if they, they beat us or uh, or, or I, I have to fight with us that, that maybe they don't get signed. So it's definitely always a, a unfair competition. And, and in certain life, it's a it's a it's a fair competition. You know, uh, people always they 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 all fly here. You know, they they couldn't beat the beat the, beat the best ever. So they say we're the next best thing. So it's definitely a target on our back. And uh, I I can only speak for myself, but. I have to embrace the challenges and the, and the test. Yeah. Nothing in life worth having doesn't come without a challenge. Absolutely. I got to agree with there now. Now, now, like I said, you know, fans got a chance to finally put a, a name with the face when you got on television here in February. But let, let's get the, let the fans know a little bit more about you that they may not know. Now, when you're not training or, you know, when you're not in camp, what is your favorite sheet meal that you have to indulge in? When you know you can kind of have a, a couple of days off to kind of soak it in and enjoy it, what's your favorite cheat meal? You know, I really don't have a, a favorite. I mean, I, I like Kit Kat. I like candy. I'm, I'm really a sweet head. So, uh, I have any type of sweet, you know. There's nothing in particular that I just have to have besides. As long as I got Kit Kat, I'm pretty good. I mean, Kit Kat's a root beer. That's, that's definitely what I love. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't have those so much, so I definitely miss them, so whenever I fight is done, you know, it's definitely a Kit Kat and a root beer somewhere close to the bedside. Now, a lot of people don't know, but you're actually a barber and still do actively, you know, do cut hair. Um, with that being stated, who's the worst hairline that you've seen in the gym over the past couple of years? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't... I, I don't really have a name. I don't really know the person, but I've definitely seen the more boy hairline, you know, and uh, <laughs> I felt sorry for them. I did. Not because I'm the best barber, but you have to walk around like that. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. 
Now, did you uh, offer, I, did you offer him to give him a shape up to try to help him out at all? You know what? I sure didn't. You know, uh, <laughs> boxing, boxing and barbers is two different lights for me. Uh, I particularly only stay sharp on my skills because I have my 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 son who I cut. Uh, I got two brothers that I cut. A few other uh, friends of the family here that I that I tighten up. So I only really stay sharp on my Clipper game or decent on my Clipper game because of the family ties to it. But boxing is my majority, my number one. My, my main priority. So, I mean, I wouldn't offer it because it is because I probably really didn't want to do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> to be honest, so I, only, I only take care of the, the people that I can. I mean, if ever in a position where someone needed me, I wouldn't have no problem, you know, doing it. But I'm just saying, like, as far as just, uh, I leave the boxing gym, the let's go cut here. If it's not like a brother or a son or somebody like that, I tend to shy away from because 'cause I'm tired after putting this time in the gym. And nine out of ten, I probably still have another workout that night. So standing on my feet and critiquing and making sure somebody's looking good. It's it's time to assume man, it could be energy taken, you know, <laughs> after a hard day. Well, absolutely. Now, uh, another question for you: Who's the first person you call or talk to after a win? Uh, it really depends on who's at the fight. To be honest, because my boys have been fortunate to be with me, and my sons have been very fortunate to be at the fight. Uh, my mother, uh, both my fathers, I have a stepfather and, a, and my actual father, my grandparents. So, I mean, as long as they're there and they usually make the fights, the, the most important people are already there. You know, both my brothers, you know, so I mean, I really don't know if there's one particular person that I. Oh, let me call and say something to unless, like I said, for, my, for whatever reason, my mom didn't make it there. Oh, my, 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 my dad didn't make it or something like that. Then I can see myself trying to make sure I contact and reach out to them. But other than that, I don't really feel the need. The phone is, it's, it's irrelevant. It's more for social media access so I can let the world know that I did what I said I was going to do. Now, and, you know, it's a yeah. something like that. Oh, right on. Now, now I want you to finish this line. This time next year, I will be a world champion. Hmm. Right on. Right on. Now, another step in that journey is going to happen here on May twenty first. Uh, part of the big triple header undercard that'll be on Showtime. Hopefully, they get your uh, bout here on Showtime Extreme, or we get some kind of feed of it. Because I mean, we really want to see more of you. Like I said, the the fight here in February. A lot of people got to finally put a name with a face. We've we've heard the name. We know that you're associated with the uh, Mayweather promotion, but we want to see more of you. Uh, you know, how many more fights you want to try to get in here this calendar year? Uh, with, with the fight coming up next month, so we can go for three, four more. I mean, as long as we're going in here, we're executing and doing what we have to do. You know, uh, we're, we're physically fit. You know, we're physically able to go out there and compete, so. There's no God forbid any injury. Uh, I'm looking to fight three, four times possibly, you know, uh, by the end of this year. So that way I'm definitely in position, a uh, contender, contender position, if not by the end of this year, early next year. Well, absolutely. Well, Linnell, man, let, let the fans know where they can follow you on social media and keep tabs uh, as you're preparing here for the bout here next month. Okay, man, if y'all on Facebook and on Twitter, you can add Linnell Bellows. And if you're on Instagram, it's at K-O Bellows, K-O-B-E-L-L-O-W-S, man. Uh, stay close, man. Follow me on my journey, man. It's a long road, but stop here, see, bro. We had to the top, you know. Kansas City, stand up. Compton, stand up. Southern California, California in general. Stand up everywhere, man. It's, it's nothing but love, man. I appreciate all my fans and my family, my friends. Absolutely, and fans can also get uh, gear to help you support you on your journey and, and rock yeah. that uh, at K.O. Bellows Apparel at BigCartel.com. Uh, make sure yeah. that you go there and visit that and, and uh, get a K.O. Bellows t-shirt and, and, and rep it proudly. Yes, please do. Please do. I appreciate all the support. Well, absolutely. Well, again, man, we appreciate you taking our time. Best of luck hearing your fight here next month. Uh, again, we want to see more of you here on television, more of you uh, knocking out people, because that's what's entertaining. Fans like to see entertainment. F people like to see people get knocked out. It's it's a, it's a hurt business, as we call boxing, and we love exactly. that. Yes, sir. 
All right, well, yes, sir. well, no, Bellows, we appreciate you taking our time with this man. Best of luck, and again, uh, thank you. Well, thank you for having me, man. Bless you, man. Stay safe. All right, thank you.